All right, now that we've had our crucial snack and sleep break, it's time to get back into our tax-related tutorial. So previously, we just talked about Python code calculations. As you can tell, there's a lot more stuff on that page. So how about we both jump right back into that, oh doer? So I'll see you there. Now over here onto the right side, we have the tax type. And there's a few options as well. Now this field determines which app the tax is used on, and subsequently, which documents the tax can appear on as well. For instance, we'd choose, in our case, the sales, to use this tax on sales orders. We would use the none option over here if we want it to basically... We would actually just use that essentially if we wanted to include this tax in a group of taxes, but don't want to list it individually with our sales or purchase taxes. I had to remember that one real quick, code doers. So be sure to keep that in mind. Now beneath that as well, and we're actually going to set this back up there to the way it was, or we're just going to go back. A little, little doopsy. Now beneath that, there's the tax scope option field over here. And when you click into that, it gives you a few more options. Now this isn't a required field, but if we do choose a tax scope, it will restrict the configured tax to only be used on either goods or services over here. I'm toggling them just so that you could see them as well. And in my case, as you could tell, since I left it blank, there won't be any restriction whatsoever. So let's leave this blank because I don't like restrictions and keep moving. All right, finally, the amount field. Of course, this is basically the tax amount. In this case, it is right now 15%. Now moving our focus towards the bottom of the tax form, we'll find the definition tab over here. And here we'll be able to define the parameters of this tax even further. In this tab, we have a couple of options and sections. We have distribution for invoices and distribution for refunds right below it over there. Let's start by taking a look up here at the invoices section. Now, to configure this section correctly, we must have exactly one line that says base. And in our case, base refers to the order line in our sales order or invoice. This is important because it is what the following lines pretty much will be based upon. Additionally, we also need to have at least one line for the tax percentage, which in our case is actually the second line over here. In the account column of this tax percentage line, we can choose the account in which this particular tax will be recorded. Now, when we specify an account here, a journal item will automatically be recorded over in the accounting app for each, basically each sale that uses this tax, every single one. Now, as you can see for this tax, we have 100% of the tax recorded into this one account over here. Over to the very far right, we have this column over here called tax grids. Now this is used to generate tax reports automatically according to our country's specific regulations. Now, below this over here, distribution for refunds, we're moving on. Now this section operates under those very same principles. So once you know how to configure one, you'll know how to configure the other one. Easy squeezy right there. Now, if we go over here into the advanced options tab, we have a few other options we can configure. First off, we can actually add a label on invoices, which is what our customers will see on exported invoices. If you don't specify a label on invoices, then the tax name will appear instead on those invoices. Then what else do we have? We'll need to select an accounting tax group, which appears above the total line on exported invoices. We also have fields related to country and company over here as well. If this tax only applies to one particular company or country. Over here to the right, we could choose to have this tax included in the price, which means that the sales price we list on our product form will already include this tax. But for now, I'm gonna leave that unchecked because I wanna show you guys the math and stuff if we ever work with it. Now, lastly, we could choose to have this tax affect the base of subsequent taxes over here. And that basically means taxes with a higher sequence than this one will be affected by this tax. But again, we're going to leave that unchecked as well. Now, as a reminder, your taxes should already be configured correctly thanks to Odoo's localization package. So you probably won't need to configure a tax basically set up yourself. But it's good to know how all of this works, Odooers. All right, now that we know what goes into configuring a tax, let's see how we can apply it automatically to our invoices. So let's go do that. So in order to see how to apply them automatically, we're going to go up here to configuration and settings. Now go on and head over to the default taxes section. Now this is where we can set up default sales and purchase taxes. Now the default taxes are automatically chosen according to your company's country, but we can always modify them here whenever we want. 
Also, it should be noted that the default sales tax that's configured here is the one that's automatically applied to all our new invoices. But again, we can always change which tax we're using on each individual sales order or invoice. Okay, like I mentioned before, these pesky tax rates tend to vary greatly by country. No worries though, Odoo has built-in tax rules or fiscal position so we can automatically apply the correct tax rate whenever we sell some stealthy wood products outside of the country. Now to check that out, let's jump into our fiscal positions page by going up here to configuration and fiscal positions. And we see a few right there. All right, you'll notice one of them is called Avatax, which is only there because we previously installed the Avatax module in the apps app, like I showed you. Now, since Stealthywood is located in the good old US of A, we can use the tax cloud or Avatax fiscal position options listed here. For those who may not know, these are programs that help us calculate sales tax rates in real time for every single city, state, and special jurisdiction inside of the US of A. Trust me, there's a lot of them. All right, if you want to learn even more about them, check out our documentation. Check out my video that I did on that for Avatax for all you fiscal fans out there. Now, we could use one of these or I could create a new custom fiscal position from scratch. And as a friendly reminder, you should only create new taxes and fiscal positions when your accounting team gives you the go ahead to do so. You never want to catch them off guard with any new unapproved taxes or fiscal positions as that would lead to some serious financial problems. Lucky for us though, the head accountant here at Stealthy Wood, Carol. Carol said I could make a new one. Why? Well, Carol loves me. So with her blessing, let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna select new up here. All right, perfect. So let's make one for, I don't know, a country, Canada. Let's do Canada. It's close enough, Canada, Canada. All right, now we're set. Now next we can choose to use the Avatax or Tax Cloud API, but I'm gonna leave those blank for now since those are US related programs. Now beneath that, we have our company and that's basically the company that the fiscal position is connected to. And then over on the right side over here, we see how to configure when this fiscal position is applied to a sale. I could choose detect automatically, which opens up a couple new options over here. Now we have the option to select VAT required and country group. So we're actually gonna select VAT required over here and underneath the country field, we're gonna type in Canada. It should appear in this list because it is a real country. Perfect. Now when I did that, you'll notice two more fields appeared federal states and zip range, which are there if we need to further drill down the specifics related to the country-based fiscal positions. But we're gonna leave those alone right now because I don't know anywhere in them. Okay, now moving forward, oh doers. With this all set in place, this fiscal position will automatically apply to customers in Canada who have a valid VAT number, perfect. All right, now we just need to configure the taxes themselves, which is what these bottom tabs over here are for. So let's say that a product of ours has a 15% tax in the US, but only 5% in Canada. To configure that, we're gonna select that align. And our product thing is 15% over here. And under tax to apply, and this is where it's gonna get cool. We're gonna type in 5% Canada. And I'm gonna select the option to create and edit real quick. It's 5% for Canada. So we're gonna go over here to the amount and we're gonna set it as 5%. Once that we do that inside of this, we can actually just hit save and close. And just like that, we've created that. Now, if we click into the account mapping tab, we can add some additional accounting rules or any legal notes we may have inside of this section below over here. But that's more on the accounting side of things. So be sure to check out all of those accounting tutorials. I was gonna give a quick shout out to them. They're awesome. All right, we're all done. Another quick thing that I can show you before we go our separate ways is how to specify a fiscal position directly on a contact form. Now to do that, we're actually going to, first of all, save real quick. We're gonna head home over here and we're gonna select in our case, contacts. Boom, beautiful. All right, so uh, we're gonna pick anyone in here. You have nice hair, Audrey, so we're gonna pick you. Now that we're inside of here, what do we want to choose, oh, doers? Well, if you see this section over here that basically says fiscal position and you select the right one for us, would you look at that, oh doers? That's it. Now this way we can always be sure the correct fiscal position is applied to the correct customer. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the detailed ins and outs of how to configure and apply taxes inside of Odoo.